Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Lone Wolf Politics YouTube video. Today is August 25th, 2020, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about how the suburbs could be key for Joe Biden to win the election. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more of my daily analysis. But let's go ahead and start talking about this NPR report that I was reading, where they talk about that Democrats' growth is fueled by the suburbs. They say that a new report from the centrist Democratic group Third Way finds that Democrats are on track to win the suburbs in five of six key states that they lost in the 2016 presidential election. This model specifically found that Democrats are in position to win majorities in the Michigan and Pennsylvania suburbs, which would set them up to win both states. Also, Democrats should get close or just reach a majority in the Florida, North Carolina, and Wisconsin suburbs, which would put them in a dead heat with Republicans in these states. And finally, Democrats are on target to win a majority in Arizona suburbs, but preliminary estimates still show Republicans with a slim advantage statewide. Regardless, though, these findings are huge news for the Democrats. Essentially, they are on track to win Michigan and Pennsylvania, and are on the precipice of doing so in Florida, North Carolina, and Wisconsin. They continue by pointing out that if Joe Biden were to win Michigan and Pennsylvania and hold all the states Hillary Clinton won in 2016, Biden would be at 268 electoral votes, which means that he only needs one more state to win. So let's go ahead and identify that on this map. So Michigan and Pennsylvania would be two huge additions. And because Trump is playing so much defense, it's expected that Biden will pick up at least one more state, which puts him in a pretty good position to win the election. But let's flip back to this article real quick. These statistics down here help put things into perspective really well, so let's take a look at them. These tables compare Clinton support in urban, suburban, and rural areas to blanket Democrat support in 2020. Keep in mind that these tables don't adjust for Joe Biden being the nominee, which deflates Democratic support a little bit because Biden is doing better than these blanket numbers, and it doesn't adjust for Trump significantly underperforming in these states. But let's talk about Arizona first. In the urban areas of Arizona, there has been no change in Democratic support, and that's the same for the suburban areas as well. But in rural areas, Democratic support has gone up two points, which means that there is still a net increase in Democratic support in the state, even without adjusting for Joe Biden being the nominee, which is definitely good news for the Democrats. And then in the state of Florida, there has been no change in urban areas, but in suburban areas, there has been a plus two point change and plus four points in rural areas which means that there has, again, been a net increase in Democratic support, which could be key for a really big swing state like the state of Florida. And then for Michigan, again, there has been no change in urban areas, but in suburban areas, there has been a plus three-point gain and a plus six-point gain in rural areas, which very well could be enough to put Joe Biden over the top in the state of Michigan, especially considering that Trump has basically already given up in the state of Michigan. So when Democrats see these statistics, even without adjusting for Joe Biden being the nominee, this is definitely incredible news. And then for the state of North Carolina. In urban areas, there's actually been a minus two point change in Democratic support, but a plus one point increase in suburban areas and plus four points in rural areas. So even though Democratic support has decreased in urban areas, there has been a net three-point change in Democratic support across all areas, which is still good news for the Democrats. And I expect this minus two-point change to actually increase with having a nominee like Joe Biden. And then in the state of Pennsylvania, there is gains across the board. In urban areas, Democratic support has increased by two points, 
suburban four points and rural six points this is definitely the best news out of all of these states for the democrats because pennsylvania is a big swing state and donald trump won it in 2016 and either needs pennsylvania or michigan to have a shot at re-election again so if pennsylvania and michigan go to biden he's basically guaranteed to win the election so both of these states are really really good news for the biden harris ticket and then in the state of wisconsin there's actually a net decrease in urban areas there has been a minus three point change in democratic support suburban areas a minus one point change in democratic support and in rural areas a plus three point increase so ultimately it's a minus one point decrease net change but remember that this model doesn't adjust for Joe Biden being the nominee, and it doesn't adjust for Donald Trump underperforming in these swing states. So ultimately, I expect Biden to actually have a net increase in the state of Wisconsin, which could be enough to put Joe Biden over the 270 needed to win. Granted, he wins Pennsylvania and Michigan. So what's clear is that Biden and the Democrats are poised to make big gains this year, which could be key for the election. But let's take a look at why these states, why suburban voters are so important. This article starts out by mentioning that the share of the electorate that is suburban voters has steadily increased since 2004. In 2016, suburban voters made up 50% of the electorate which is a huge number. And based off of the margins here, Trump barely won the suburban vote back in 2016. And according to these polls down here, he's down by around 15 points, which is a historic deficit. And for suburban women, 66% of them disapproved of the job, of the job President Trump is doing overall, and 58% said they strongly disapprove. Now, this is a pretty damning statistic for Trump, considering that this is a demographic he and the Republicans are trying to target this year, and they've targeted in the past. But it was also damning in 2018. NPR points out that Republicans have been unable to pass any major legislative items since Democrats took control of the House in 2018. Democrats were able to do so because of their surprising strength in right-leaning suburban districts. The ultimate reality is that suburbs are crucial and the Republicans are losing them. And that is most likely due to the wide disdain for Trump and the fact that the suburbs are growing more diverse, right? The suburbs were once primarily white and that's not so much the case anymore. Obviously, it's expected that Trump is going to put up a fight to make sure he doesn't lose these suburban, suburban, suburban voters, which is why this article talks about him telling suburban voters, your home will go down in value and crime rates will rapidly rise in reference to Biden being elected as president. Now, whether or not these attempts at fear mongering will stick with voters is the important question. But regardless, Trump is playing defense and that's a good enough position for Biden. But let's go back to the electoral map and talk about these states that NPR says can be impacted. That's Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Florida, and Arizona. Remember, Biden is expected to win Michigan and Pennsylvania very easily, so that means he only needs one more state. That could be Wisconsin or Arizona or a larger swing state like Florida or North Carolina. If Biden can lock down some more suburban voters in any of these closer states, I'd say he's well on his way to becoming the 46th president. And I think all of that goes to show just how important this group of voters truly is. But that's all I have for today's video. I just want to say thank you so, so much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and drop suggestions for future videos in the comments below. With that being said, I'll see all of you in my next video.